Two men arrested with more than 230 pounds of cocaine are expected in Las Vegas in a courtroom next month. The pair was picked up on the I-15 on Friday. That's why this guy looks so proud. You know, he's, he's the one who found it. The drug sniffed out by one of Metro's finest. That's a Belgian Malinois they call Nuggets. And News 3's Denise Roche live down at the Regional Justice Center. And, and Denise, this dog really has become something of a celebrity. Yeah, Jim, Nugget's picture has been like thousands of times on Facebook. His work now leading to the arrest of two men on felony traffic charges. But if you were expecting this Metro canine to be a big, bad police dog, you would be wrong. He good boy. He's a good boy. When it comes to back rubs, Nuggets is all in. Oh my goodness. The four-year-old Belgian Malinois up for any attention he can get. But don't let his sunny disposition fool you. Frustrating at times. <laughs> Why is that? Uh, he likes to whine a lot. Nuggets is a worker, one of four narcotics dogs in the Metro Canine Unit, training with partner Thomas Bachman every day. We try to throw as many different variables at them so that they're not surprised and we as the handler aren't surprised. And on Friday, Nugget's biggest find yet, ten and a half million dollars worth of cocaine, tipping the scales at just over 230 pounds. It's this photo released after the bus that generated hundreds of comments on Facebook. One person calling him the cutest officer ever. For the amount of narcotics that are on the streets, uh, to be able to take that much weight off the streets, uh, quite significant. It started as a traffic stop on I-15 near St. Rose Parkway. Two men in a semi-truck hauling tomatoes from California to Michigan pulled over when officers say the truck kept swerving out of the travel lane. According to an arrest report, the driver, 29-year-old Nanak Singh, exhibited extremely nervous behavior. Nuggets and Detective Bachman were called to assist. Typical stop uh, from my partner, and, and I was requested to uh, lend canine assistance. Uh, so we ran the exterior of the vehicle, and uh, lo and behold, we got the, uh, the positive alert. Both Singh and passenger Chandra Prakish were arrested. Let me see your hands. The lethal, the lethal. And less than a week earlier, Nuggets and Bachman participated in the Metro Canine Trials. His event wasn't videotaped, narcotics detection done without an audience. But we can tell you Nuggets came in second out of 28 contestants in the narcotics top dog event. The bond that he and I have, like I said, is as vocal as he can get. Uh, it's my buddy. A canine with a fan club. Just a big old mean police dog. No. No. <laughs> not by any means. He looks it, but he by all means is not. And Bachman describes Nuggets as pampered, but again, he is well trained. He can he is certified to sniff out not only cocaine, but also heroin, meth, and marijuana. That video attracting more than 16,000 views on Twitter. Brett Forrest joins us live here in the studio. And Brett, this has all happened at the Smith Center. It was during an event put on by the Nevada Independent. Yeah, Jim Marie, good evening. And uh, so the man in that video, he does not regret what he did confronting Sheriff Lombardo and posting the video publicly. But he says he does regret some of the language he used because it takes away from the issues he was trying to criticize. Joe Lombardo, real peace. Hi, thank you for coming out. You think you throw on your little blazer? Joe Lombardo attending an event at the Smith Center, being asked to pose for a photo. Instead, the person filming starts verbally accosting the sheriff. Pretend you're not putting a documentary in prison, you piece of garbage, huh? Not getting, not profiting off of hate, not profiting off of hate. In the video, Lombardo tries to distance himself. The man filming identified as Sean Navarro. He's a member of the Las Vegas Democratic Socialists. He says the video wasn't planned, but after sitting next to Lombardo all evening, he felt compelled to say something. Pretend that he's not doing these horrible things, that he's like the adult Republican, he's the respectable Republican. Um, and it's something I really disagree with. I really disagree with him trying to be in these spaces and, and trying to be comfortable and no one really saying anything to him. The incident reminiscent of a restaurant confrontation between Governor Sisolak and a man just four weeks ago. You working for China, piece of it's called You Trades, you, we should string you up by lamppost right now. Navarro doesn't think it's the same, saying he didn't threaten the sheriff like what happened with the governor. He says he was nervous and maybe could have used less aggressive words. I 120% do not uh, regret what I said, 
I said it with my chest. I would say it again. I regret not saying more. That honestly was me at like 50%. I wanted to say a lot more, but I was, I was trying to be a little bit, I didn't want to be too loud and disruptive. The confrontation drawing condemnation from Republicans and Democrats alike. Governor Sisolak tweeting, I condemn this rhetoric in the strongest terms. And with so many unaffiliated voters in Nevada, some say social media posts like this could backfire. All you're doing is trying to gin up their interest. But does it have the opposite effect in terms of winning support? It probably does. Now, Joe Lombardo's campaign also sending a statement saying, in part, as sheriff, I deal with my share of unruly people every day. But in politics, there should be no acceptance of this kind of vitriol and hate that must be condemned in the strongest terms possible. Our county school district says it's cracking down on school violence. In fact, today, the introduction of new disciplinary actions and other security measures took place. Here's Crisis in the Classroom investigative reporter Tiffany Lane, who was there when CCSD announced those changes. Yes, LaToya, Jim, this is an issue that we just cannot stop speaking of. It's so important to our community. Parents have talked to News 3 about keeping their kids home because of fear of what's happening in our schools. Some teachers quitting because they don't feel safe. Today we heard of some of these changes coming, including more severe punishment. If students violate the, students, the student code of conduct, it will be clear what consequences will be. CCSD Superintendent Jesus Dara says changes are coming when it comes to punishing students for violence. Police Chief Mike Blackeye says so far they've reported 3,000 incidents. That includes assaults and fights since the start of the school year. Fighting is a major infraction on campus. Fighting that results in significant campus disruption will be a recommended expulsion from school. How is this different than before? Let me break it down. Before campus disruption was discretionary expulsion. Now if a student is involved in a fight, it will be a recommended expulsion. Students recommended for expulsion for any major disciplinary infraction will be referred to the following. Our academic centers, Nevada Learning Academy, the Lighthouse and Acceleration Academy. Dr. Jara emphasizes these students need re-engagement and rehabilitation. We also know that zero tolerance does not work. We have to take care of our children, our precious asset in this community. So we have to find ways to re-engage them, involving their parents and guardians. I asked the superintendent about restorative justice programs, something many have told News 3 isn't being implemented properly. ACLU Director Atar Hasibula defined what restorative justice means. Rather than instantly jumping into the stage of we're looking at suspension and expulsion or prosecution or something of the sort, we'd be looking to seek models by which the person who may have been a victim of, a, of an incident is heard, their thoughts are expressed, we start to understand the mechanism for why the action occurred, and we create a, a remedy that would be in place that would allow for healing on both sides. Here's what Dr. Jara says about restorative justice in our schools. We are now... We're going to continue, and as I say, double down, is to make sure that it's consistent across the board. Um, again, it's, 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 it's three years um, that we're at this. You know, for, for, for folks to say that changing a system that has occurred for over 100 years and change it in three years in the midst of a pandemic, that it's perfect? Absolutely it's not perfect. On top of changing the code of conduct, the district will reconvene the Expulsion Review Board where violent and dangerous situations will be evaluated. And one more change parents need to know, JAR announced schools will have a single point of entry. We're going to then um, put, some, put some systems and, and fencing, and, and, uh, I'm not the, the head of the facilities here, but we're going to find ways to make sure that um, we, we limit all the entry points so then all the kids come into it one camp. And today we heard that the violence is not limited to students. CCSD Police Chief Mike Blackeye says parents have been coming onto campuses and committing some of the acts of violence as well, adding to the problem. Now what do you think of the changes and solutions we heard about today? Contact the Crisis in the Classroom tip line. My email on their school tips at news3lv.com. Hi everybody, I'm Reed Cowan from News 3 Las Vegas. We want to thank you for checking out our YouTube channel. Remember, you can always see more of our videos by clicking on the video links. And also don't forget, to click that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of our YouTube updates. Thanks for watching.